2022, The Winchesters, prequel to Supernatural. I'm really hoping it's going to be good, but Supernatural ended when it should have, which is when it was starting to go really woke, uh, to the point where God was going to be black. Up until the last episode, he was they were going to have a black female God. Um, I'm hoping he's not going to be woke, but I don't know, I'll see how it goes. Open mind-ish. Um, I'm about two minutes into the episode. Not happy. Um, two minutes and 30 seconds, and you get Dean Winchester, the voice coming over the road, and now I'm going to tell you the story of how I came to be, how my parents met. Yeah, well, now apparently his parents are Mexican. I haven't seen his mum yet, but she's always been skinny white blonde. Very Caucasian. His dad, Caucasian. Now his dad is apparently a bit of a Mexican hint with white makeup. Yeah, he's white faced, Mexican. Um, all the credits so far are Mexican names. And the music is so Texan that it is more towards New Mexico music sounding. And Lawrence, Kansas is not so much a Canadian looking place that it was in the first series of Supernatural, it now looks more like it's in New Mexico. Um, yeah, there's a very disproportionate number of people who are not white in this. So I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be woke. Oh, I've got the first three episodes downloaded. I'll give it a go and see how far I get. Hopefully, it might, maybe it'll pick up. Just going through the um, top of the IMBD page, the actual series is tedious as fuck. Now, Mary Winchester, Campbell, um, for real life, she's born in New York. And all her bios says, all of the bios of the people in this are practically non-existent. Um, the guy who plays John Winchester, Drake Roger, nothing about him at all. Not a thing. Um, a lot of the time with modern stuff, if they are a straight white, man especially if they're american or english they would not put that in their bio unless they're actually famous if they're not famous they won't put it down there because people don't want straight white men so if he puts down there it makes himself look a bit dark there's more chance of him getting work the next person in the uh, billing nida kurshid that's a very traditional midwestern american sounding name next person jojo filiatas very American sounding name. Next person, Demetria McKinney. Yes, she, she looks extremely, yeah. Um, see, the area where, where this is set, Midwestern areas, you don't really get people with a tan. This is about as dark as you're gonna get. And they have made her face look a lot darker than it really is in real life. Um, considering that the actress who portrayed their mother in the Supernatural series is actually an English woman. You can't get much paler than that. So you don't get black people. You sure as hell don't get, yeah, Bianca Kajits, Kajilik, Kajilik, I don't know. Um, yeah, they've really gone to town on making the point of only having one Caucasian person, her. Everyone else is unknown origins and well, foreign sounding names. Yeah, they, they've basically they've decided to go woke. I pretty much guarantee the one white guy in it, John Winchester, he's going to be a fuckwit. Because that is how American movies and TV series go. If you're a white female, you've got to be a slut, generally a junkie or an addict of some kind. If you're a straight white man, you've got to be a criminal or a fuckwit. And I think he's... Well, he's getting beaten up by one guy and he's, she's just coming to rescue him. And predictably, he steps in to try to help, and the first thing he does is smack her in the face. By accident. Because he's a fuckwit. What a surprise. Somehow I don't think I'm going to be watching much of this. I'll get through as much as I can. But America has a real nasty habit of destroying things out of white heroes. They did the same with um, Superman. I don't even remember the new, the new series name. It's not Superman and Lois. Is it Superman and Lois? Oh, it is. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, I got through I think, the first series. 
and it was really woke, anti-straight white men. And it got to the point I couldn't watch it anymore. I wanted to throw up just thinking about watching it. Where you've got um, the girl in it. It's okay for her to go and fuck some woman at camp and for her to come and stalk her a thousand miles away to her home. And she's a child, underage, but it's not okay for her dad to snog the waitress. Yeah, it, it became so extremely racially offensive against white men. This... I'm three minutes in and I'm already fucked off. I've noticed in a couple of series they've had this habit of having the English person as an Indian. As in India Indian. With an English accent. And it doesn't work. It just sounds crap. Like it just all about trying to do an English accent. I know he does I know he is I know he's British, but he doesn't sound proper right when he's doing an English accent. When he's doing an American accent, he sounds normal. Which is kind of weird and first. But this woman, I've got no idea what she's saying. I don't understand a single word that comes out of her mouth. And I'm trying to listen, and it's not like I've got a dodgy low res copy, I've got a high HD copy, and she is slurring so much that I've got no fucking clue what she's saying. Or I heard the word rat. That's all I understood from everything she has said. The rest of it, I've got no clue. Um, the acting is pretty shit. Really, really shit. The two main characters, uh, the blonde's fine, but everyone else is crap. I mean, it's really the case of cashing in on the notoriety of Supernatural. It was dead and done. Leave it. Buried. If it's going to be another young Sheldon where they've got fucking people from the past doing a little voiceover like Jensen Eccles, I think he's a producer on this. He, had, he did a voiceover at the beginning. Oh, God. He's already perved on his mother in a sexual way quite a few times during Supernatural. To quote, I'm going to hell. Again. I'm starting to decipher what words that she's actually using. Um, I'm guessing she's got the same acting coach as Drusilla from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And a lot of these people who get acting lessons from people who are not English. Who get acting lessons from people who are Australian or American. Who watch Home and Away and think that's English. For fuck's sake. Um, whereas you get someone like James Masters, who played Spike in Buffy, he did a very good English accent because he was taught by an English guy. Um, oh, Rupert Giles. Anthony Stewart Head gave him an acting lessons on how to do voices. This one, she's using words like, instead of saying Mary, she's saying, Mary? Well, Mary, is it okay if I talk like Dick Van Dyke from Mary Poppins, Mrs? You know... Yeah, just bear in mind, Dick Van Dyke is a joke name, as in dick, as in penis. Dyke, as in lesbian, you know, penis into lesbian. Um, the accents are really doing my nuts. It makes it very, very unimmersive. It's going to be a lot better if I don't actually watch it and just fucking have a wank or play a game or something and have it as background, because watching it is just an irritating the shit out of me. She does not have any supernatural powers or strength. She's a skinny little five foot three woman. She does not have big muscle mass. This is a bullet belt. Not only is this a bullet belt, this is a bullet belt filled with shotgun shells. This means it is going to be very, very heavy. A handful of shotgun shells would be maybe, I'm not going to use American weight because I live in the 21st century, not the 18th. Um, that's going to weigh about 20 kilos. Yeah, it, depending on the type of load, between 10 and 20 kilos in weight. And she just, floop, with her fingers, chuck it in, like she's having a quick flick. So, yeah, that's not really immersive when she's moving a heavy object with a couple of fingers. I don't care how many decades she's been flipping her fucking duplicate on the mouse, 
She's not going to move it that easily. Yeah, there's a lot of things there that they really didn't. It's made for idiots. It's made for woke idiots. It's not made for anybody with any real interest in the program. It's a box ticking job. The reason that Supernatural was so good is that it never lied about the main characters. There are a couple of barely educated hillbillies, borderline criminals, doing what they can. So there wasn't a lot of acting involved. This is crap. I'm hoping it picks up. But I'm only 16 minutes in and I'm bored and annoyed. I'm going to play a game on. Fuck it. Wow, I made it 10 seconds before having to pause it again. Pop culture references were really good and supernatural because they were references to popular culture. They're referencing popular culture that does not yet exist. This is set in 1972, which would be two to three years before Dean Winchester was born. So they got to get together, get it on, get married, and she's got to knock out a baby within three years. Yeah, I think the timeline's a bit fucked. So in 1972, Willard would not exist. Willard is a movie about a rat. It's actually a ripoff of The Rats by James Herbert. But that movie came out in the 1980s, about 10 years after this is set. And so she's referencing something that hasn't even happened yet. 20 minutes in, meet Carlos, the cool dude, who saves both the white people from the demon, who is suave, sophisticated, and debonair, and all the words, he has no idea what they mean. Fuck's sake. Yeah, they've very quickly lost the white makeup on John, who is now looking darker than a Mexican. And it, they do this, they, they make it, not in one go and not over time they just do it each scene they will make him slightly less caucasian slightly more brown which is what they've done they've thickened his eyebrows they've darkened his skin and they've darkened and greasified his hair a little bit and mess it up to make him look more and more what the stereotype mexican looks like if you want to know what john winchester should look like have a look at supernatural or Watchmen. This is Mary's ex-boyfriend who was screwing around with one of her ex-girlfriends and Mary's previous boyfriend was Blanco, Pablo, Bianco, a very very Mexican sounding name. This is basically oh, shit. It's one of those programs where you spend more time reviewing it than watching it. Um, at least when the Winchesters, 17, actually did their talking whilst in a car, they pretended to drive. She's not even pretending to drive. She's just sitting there having a chat. What happened to Maggie? Maggie was killed by Dean. That there's no even pretense that they're actually in a moving vehicle that they are driving at night in the dark. Yeah, that there is no immersion whatsoever. There's no attempt at anything that's actually going to be any good. It's just a cash cow. That simple. A work fest. Um, I'm enjoying it because I'm ignoring the fact that it has any relevance whatsoever to the Supernatural series, franchise, or whatever. I'm looking at it as a Mexican... Indian spin-off of Buffy. That's that's how I'm, if I look at it in that way, it's good. It's funny. It's not something I'm gonna want to watch more than once, but it's watchable. The fact that they've even got Bangla music in the background with a bit of a you know speedy gonzales! I'm expecting to start doing a fucking Bollywood dance. Or rash to pop out. Oh, no, no, no. It's funny. 
I'm not sure if they meant it to be funny, but it is funny. It's more like some kind of carry on movie. And while we're starting to sound Australian, maybe because I was talking about Australians. Um, I can't watch anymore. I made it to episode two. And it's really obvious in the way the person behaves that the Mexican guy, okay, the official Mexican guy, not the unofficial Mexican and Indian people, um, is gay. Everything about him is gay. And yet, episode two, he's grabbing her tits. She's obviously really fucking pissed off and uncomfortable about it, but she's struggling through like an actress, even though he has got a handful of tit on both sides. So because she's a white, skinny blonde who needs to have her roots dyed because she's not a real blonde, she's allowed to be sexually molested by somebody because he's not white. Yeah, I've, I've made it a few minutes in episode two. I'm giving up. This is not just racially offensive against white people. It's also sexually offensive because it's encouraging the brainwashing thing whereby if you're not white, you can sexually abuse and molest women. Just as long as you're not white. If you're white and female, you have to put up with it and smile as you're sexually abused by brown and black people. Fucking racist, sexually offensive shit. The Winchester is 2022. I made it 17 minutes into episode two. It is extremely woke. It is a direct ripoff of Supernatural and Buffy. There's nothing original about it. It's extremely offensive to white people, as is most stuff coming out of America. You've got one Caucasian person, the skinny white blonde, or rather attempt at being blonde. Everyone else is either Mexican or Indian. I don't mean Native American Indian. I mean India Indian. They even have Bangli music in it. I honestly expected the zombie at one point or whatever the fuck it was to start doing a Bollywood dance. You've got one white person. That is it. Everyone else. John Winchester. Yes, this black person is actually John Winchester. He starts off being Caucasian. He's actually Mexican white faced in half the first episode and they gradually throughout the episode remove the whitening from his skin the, the makeup to make him look browner and browner and browner to the point where in episode two this is 17 minutes into episode two he looks darker than the official mexican carlos who is gay and sexually abused her five minutes ago a shishy fucking not this brainwashing anti-white crap makes me want to fucking put a fist through the tv they're making it so they're brainwashing people to think that if you're black or brown, it's okay for you to sexually abuse somebody if they're white. I'm dreading watching the new series of Chucky because that was even worse. Because the girl in Chucky was, what, 12 when she made that, the first series? The cab, don't cab her tits, sorry. She was 12 and they had her out being sexually active and a junkie. Because she's white, so that's okay. This one, they had the Carlos guy grabbing her tits and she's apparently already had two black boyfriends and a brown boyfriend that we mentioned in passing in the first episode they didn't say black or brown but they use words like um blanco and traditional stereotype black and brown names and her future husband is now getting darker by the minute at this rate by the end of episode number two He's going to be talking like this all the time, man. So, yeah, he's getting darker and darker by the minute. His, eyebrow, his eyebrows have gotten thicker and darker. His hair is getting greasier by the minute. And, yeah, it's extremely offensive. I tried doing... An, I did actually try reviewing it without being any prejudice because I know how crap work shit is. I tried to watch it and hope that I wasn't going to be woke. The fact that you got Jensen Ackles, Eccles, what the fuck his name is, doing a voiceover for it is just to try to get clickbait. That's the only reason he's in it. Exactly the same with Young Sheldon, where you've got Parsons, James Parsons, Jim Parsons, fuck no, the gay skinny guy from Big Bang Theory doing a voiceover. Except Young Sheldon is actually quite interesting. They should rename it The Missy Show because she's the most interesting person in it. But this is shit. 
I, I'm not even going to bother watching anymore because I'm too angry and too offended by the anti-white racism, by the sexually abusive way that this poor woman has been treated. And the fact that the next scene after having sexually abused by this Mexican guy, she has to wear an outfit, which I can't show you on YouTube because my channel would get shut down. It's not just a transparent outfit. And I mean, you can see how little her knickers are covering. They've also had quite a few angles where you can see her nipples from the side. It's that it's been, she's obviously really uncomfortable wearing it because she keeps pulling it up and you can see that she's being told to stop pulling it up. And she's getting more and more pissed off. Not in character. So another series woke that will not make it to a second series. Or if it does, it won't have any views. Pretty much like anything that gets woke. It's just fucking offensive. 